Hi, I'm Yuna Han, and I'm going to have a presentation about my research. Wait, let's think about your purchase again, a study on interventions for supporting self-controlled online purchases. With the advances in the e-commerce market, the number of people who shop online and impulsively buy has been also increased. Many studies have been conducted on consumer behavior, including impulse buying. Previous works have shown that the impulse buying can negatively impact on consumers, and consumers also may desire tools for supporting them to curb their impulse buying. From here, this study is designed for developing interventions to support consumer self-controlled online purchases. We set our target users as Chinese Korean consumers to investigate online consumer behavior because prior work demonstrates that young shoppers are more likely to buy impulsively and they are a key generation for online commerce. Then we designed four different types of interventions and explored how this can support consumer self-controlled online purchases. There were three research questions we wanted to know. First, do interventions reduce impulse buying urge? If the interventions have effectiveness on curbing impulse buying behavior, then we wonder what is the most effective one among them. And lastly, we wanted to explore how the participants perceive and experience interventions in perspectives of their shopping experience. To answer our research questions, our research were divided into two major parts. First, we conducted an online survey to figure out consumption behavior of Korean Chinese consumers, and then in lab user study was followed to evaluate the designed interventions. The online survey was to comprehend the online shopping patterns and impulse buying tendency of Korean Chinese consumers, and also to get a ground truth for the settings of the follow-up study. There was a total of 118 participants with an average age of 26. We asked five questions about online shopping patterns and impulse buying to the participants. More than 90% of the participants answered that they shop online at least once a month, and Coupon was the most frequently visited e-commerce site. They used the site because of its convenient shipping service and its checkout login system. And they normally spend $17 to $34 when they make an impulse buying. We rebuilt 10 thematic categories for the context of impulse buying. As the categorization from the preliminary research doesn't cover all our responses, so we have added two more categories, which were financial affordability and social accountability. Let me briefly introduce the top three contexts for impulse buying. Motivation and impulse buying causes when you are strongly motivated to buy, being attracted by the product itself. Savings means buying something impulsively or more than what you expected for saving money. For example, buying in a bulk on impulse for free shipping. Shopping enthusiasm is buying something impulsively because they seek positive emotion for shopping. For example, some participants give themselves a present when they are depressed. We codify the responses about self-control strategies over impulse buying based on Mozart's work. Making costs more salient means reframing the cost to be more salient, such as checking their account balance or showing alternative uses of money. Uh, this was the most common strategy, and many participants also choose postponement to curb their impulse buying. For example, they first put a product into their shopping cart and had time to think. They also encourage themselves reflection, such as completing a need assessment before making a purchase. Among these strategies, we chose four methods to design the interventions. Enforcing spending limits was excluded because we gave the participants a price limit in the follow-up study. And increasing checkout effort was also excluded because all interventions already involved checkout effort by giving a certain task. Lastly, we excluded avoidance, which means avoiding shopping environment itself because the interventions were self-control tools which work on the online shopping website. When designing interventions, we reviewed preliminary research and our survey research to specify a task of each intervention. 
Let me introduce our designed interventions. Reflection would ask users four questions to encourage reflection about purchasing, such as replacement, need assessment, reasons to buy, and reasons not to buy. Distraction would provide users a squares counting task. There are 10 figures in each row and totally 30 rows. Desire reduction would introduce negative impressions to the users about the product by giving a task to read negative reviews and write down expected shortcomings. Salient costs would show the opportunity costs they can take if they don't buy the product. The users can select their interesting category in drop down list and it will show a message such as if you save this money four more times, you can go on a trip. Lastly, we wanted to confirm the effectiveness of each intervention method rather than impact due to time delay. So we made a postponement as a baseline intervention for failings. It gives a two minute delay, which is the average time for performing tests of other interventions. We implemented interventions using Chrome extensions. This is the interface of our intervention used on shopping website. The extension hides a My Cart and Checkout button to prevent users to make a purchase without experiencing our interventions. Also, it keeps log of users' interaction on the shopping website, including any click or drag events and visited URLs. This was for just in case of any violations or technical issues because we conducted user study remotely. The experiment environment was on Coupang because it is the most popular website for our target user according to our survey research. Coupang has 33 impressive creating features, quite a lot compared to other 200 online websites which have uh, about 19 features on average. It also covers 17 of the top 20 impressive features such as discounted price and sale page. The participants are Chinese online consumers who have an experience of online shopping using Coupang. We also recruited who desire to control their impulse buying behavior because self-control strategies are especially effective for highly motivated individuals. Prior to the experiment, a tutorial session was introduced for installing the extension and the participants were asked to share their screen during the entire experiment. Then a demographic survey was followed, which asked age, gender, income, and so on. We then randomly assigned the participants to one of the five groups and gave all of them an imaginary shopping scenario to clarify in spine context. We induced the participants to imagine that they are paid about $26 as a participation fee, and they can start shopping to select one product that they want to buy the most. This is because our online survey result indicates that consumers were likely to make an impulse purchase when they have extra money, such as unexpected income. We measured the consumer's impulse buying urge twice before and after experiencing an intervention task. After the main task, we had post-survey questions. We measured the participants' perceived workload of the intervention task with NASA PLX which is widely used validated method to measure the workload. And we also measure impulse buying tendency. We asked five questions to explore how the interventions impacted on the participant's user experience. First two questions to investigate perceived efficacy and the next two questions for preference. And the last one was asking about any improvements or suggestions for a novel intervention. We recruited 107 participants with an average age of 24.7 years old, and the average RBD score of them was about 24, which is relatively higher compared to other previous works. The participants spent 23 minutes on average for the entire experiment. Uh, the average price of products they selected was $16.5. To answer research question one, we performed paired sample t-tests with impulse buying arch. 
The result indicated that all interventions did reduce the participants' impulse spying odds except baseline interventions. To answer research question two, we've performed ANOVA analysis on impulse spying odds. The post op analysis results show that uh, reflection and desire reduction were significantly more effective than post op Also, reflection was significantly more effective than distraction. To answer research question three, we performed qualitative analysis. First, reflection intervention helped the participants to make a deliberate and reasonable consumption choice. For example, the participants could realize that he already had one that could replace the product. We found it interesting that even those who decided to buy were also satisfied as their choices were really worth the money. As the participants write more replacements, write more reasons not to buy, and ponder longer, the effectiveness of the interventions also increased. There were two types in distraction group. One of them turned their attention from shopping to the counting task, and the other one kept thinking about the necessity of the product while the counting task. The score of NASA TLX of distraction was significantly higher than other intervention except reflection. And the participants who gave low scores on preference commented that high fatigue was the main reason. Desire reduction helped the participants to have an objective decision-making process after comparing the pros and cons. The participants focused on their future emotional state, such as anger or dissatisfaction from the product, or they cared about the probability of fail purchasing. As the task workload was heavier, the effect of the intervention was decreased. We infer that it was because the participants uh, felt cognitive load when they did not agree with the reviews or when, when it was hard to find negative reviews. The participants liked salient codes because they could easily compare opportunity codes. They gave high scores for the questions asking their intention to continue using the intervention. The participants compared the value of the product with, with uh, what they need for a living and what they like to do. And this indicated that our product list of the intervention worked well for our target group. Here are the lessons we learned from our study. Interventions works as a break for the flow of shopping. And we also find a conflict between e-commerce sites and consumers. And all interventions induce self-reflection. Must buy is an important criterion for defining impulse buying. Intervention help consumers to build a good shopping habit. Interventions also provide a comparison point for decision making. Interventions need to consider personal shopping habit. And high workload may result in adverse effects. Lastly, consumers want intervention works not always, but only when consumers really need it. Due to time limit, I summarize lessons learned from our study. We have our lessons learned in detail and design implications in our paper. So if you are interested in, please read it. In our study, we conducted online survey to figure out online consumption behavior and impulse buying of Korean Chinese consumers. And we designed interventions supporting self-controlled online purchases and performed a user study for the evaluation on the real world e-commerce site. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first work that directly investigates and compares the effectiveness of different types of interventions in the real environment. We believe this work can be one more step to understand consumers' impulse buying and explore interventions in consumer behavior research. And this is the end of my presentations. Thank you for listening.